Hello, my name is Kevin Porman. I'm a developer advocate here at Salesforce. And with me today on Code Live, I have a very special guest. Julian, you want to introduce yourself? Testing. Are you there, Julian? Huh, let's see. Julian, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. You ready to go? I am, I am, of course. Awesome. So let's go ahead and introduce yourself. We had a little bit of audio technical difficulty there. I apologize. Uh, Julian, why don't you introduce yourself? Of course. Hello, you all. My name is Julian Duque. I'm a principal developer advocate here at Salesforce, working with Kevin also on this amazing team. Focus mostly on the elastic services, Heroku side of things uh, at Salesforce. And a passionate JavaScript and Node.js developer. I've been doing JavaScript since 2010, 2011, pretty much. And still is one of my favorite language to work with. All right, so as we've talked about before, JavaScript is not my love language, uh, but it is to say your love language, your favorite language? Let's say well, as of now is my main tool for the job, yes. Main tool for the job, all right, that's the fair main enough. Tool for the job. Now, uh, I was joking with Julian earlier, I said I was gonna introduce him as the second most knowledgeable person in JavaScript, um, second only to the person who invented JavaScript. And he begged me not to do that, but uh, so I just slid that in there. Um, <laughs> But I, I, Julian, uh, since you are a big fan of uh, the uh, the JavaScript language, I've asked you here to help me work through the JavaScript language hard parts. Now, I call it the hard parts. Maybe I should call it the bad parts. There's this famous book called uh, JavaScript, The Good Parts. Have you seen this book? Yes. Yeah. So JavaScript, The Good Parts. And then, and this came out, what, probably, it came out, what, 2008-ish? And um, it's it's like this this big, and then you have it's it's always usually sat next to the JavaScript definitive language guide, which is like this which big, is huge, um, exactly. But uh, we have some topics that we're going to go over today as part of our learning JavaScript to pass the JavaScript certification exam, that um, are difficult or confusing or may not be like other languages. And so I've asked uh, Julian here so he can help guide us in that discussion and sort of give us the expert's opinion on things. And the first one, we hit upon it last week a little bit, is this. Um, this is a, a keyword in JavaScript. And uh, do you wanna you want to take over and tell us a little bit about it while I set this up as a JavaScript file? Oh, of course, yes. And, and, and I'm not looking at that file for some reason here. I'm following you on live share. I'm not looking at that one. Uh, I may need to so save it. One second, oh, let me okay. save it here. So maybe, maybe that's why. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna call it this.js. This.js. Oh, okay. Now I'm seeing it. Now you can see it. So for for some of you that have worked with object oriented programming languages, uh, this keyword might be familiar to you. Pretty much, this uh, kept the context of the object you are working with. JavaScript. I, I will not call JavaScript an object-oriented programming language, even though you can uh, sort of uh, create classes and instantiate objects and everything. JavaScript is a little bit more difficult, more dynamic, more flexible. So this can have different meanings depending on the context you are using it. It could be a different value if you are using it on the global script, pretty much. Like for example, in here, I can have access to the, this keyword and get a value of it. Or uh, inside a function or inside an object, it might be a different value. Depending on the execution context, this can behave differently. So sometimes when I'm solving issues with JavaScript and trying to access properties using this, I might get some surprises. And some people sometimes do certain tricks to those surprises. And I think you see this piece 
of code sometimes, like bar self equals this, to keep the reference of this in a variable, and then I can use that this inside another function. So yeah, these, ha these are things that in previous versions of JavaScript were needed in order to maintain the context of the specific value of this. But now on modern versions of JavaScript, there are like different ways of overcome these, this issue. So you mentioned something there, and I think it's important. Um, you said capturing this in order to use it in another function. Can you give us an example of what that looks like? Yeah, of course. So let's see how can uh, we do this uh, easy. Okay, so let's create a parent function, right? And in this parent function, I'm going to be uh, creating uh, this value. So this, this is a value. Let's say, let's call it Kevin. And I'm going to be creating a child function inside this. No, but I, I need to get my parent function this value. I need to access Kevin here. Okay. But how can I access Kevin here? So most languages would consider this in scope because a dot value or a value is uh, defined prior to the definition of child function. But JavaScript is different, right? Exactly. So in this case, child function has its own this. So if I if, if I want to access that, I will need to do something like bar self equal this, and then access that value here, for example, console log self a value. So you can capture this and give it another variable name, and it it's available inside. It's available in scope, uh, but it this gets overwritten. Here, this is not overwritten. Pretty much, I, I am I am storing the parent this in this variable, and here I pretty much have my child function this is going to be different than my parent function this, which is in case it's going to be self. And because it's it works because self is global, right? It's 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 going to be global within this context not global not the overall global so it is not a global variable it is it is in this specific context let, let me change bar to const so i can make it like a scope okay. so it is not going to leak outside the scope of this function and here specifically self is going to be different than the this that belongs into this function so each function has its own this its own context and I, I guess where this becomes really confusing is when you start doing anonymous functions or i call them closures um, some people call them anonymous functions is there is there a reason why we don't call javascript closures closures why we call them anonymous functions hmm. they that's a very good question and i i exactly don't know the answer julian we're gonna to have to get the guy who invented javascript on in order yeah to let's call that. brian uh brendan ike to to, <laughs> to answer that question right now you, ask you him to see the napkin guard it was originally drawn on um yeah okay so we've got this now some of you may be going why would you have a function inside of a function and i for one generally this is not a pattern i see outside of javascript yeah, that's um, something very JavaScript -y and, and, and and it happens. And, and it happens. And so like one of the things that we're going to talk about is uh, inner functions as, as being a confusing part of, of this. But we talk about this inner function. And I think I think a better example, maybe not a better example. Another example would be uh, where you did something like um, the set timeout and you had this anonymous function in here mm -hmm. uh, where you wanted to use you could say this um uh, that's a that's a good one so let's that. let's play with that set timeout uh, exactly so let's do this this is a good example with the set timeout let's say we want to execute that after 
10 milliseconds. I can yeah, I can type, I promise. Uh, so we've got, now, if you're new to JavaScript, set timeout is a, a language provided function that does something after a thousand seconds, a thousand milliseconds in this case. Exactly. So th this is what it's called a timer execution. Mm -hmm. So pretty much it's going to execute this function, which in this case is going to be a callback. A callback function is a function that is going to be executed in the future. And uh, when I execute this function right here, my this is going to be different than the parent function this. So let's let's do the the example exactly. And then we can execute this. Let's execute the parent function, obviously. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. We should probably call the parent function. Yeah. Um, and then let me rerun that. Uh oh. Cannot set properties of undefined setting a value. Uh, oh, oh of, of course, of course, of course. Let me let me do this. This is going to be a constructor in this case. Uh, let's uh, work it out uh, a, be a better way. So while you're typing on that, I want to encourage everybody who's watching, chime in on the chat. Tell us uh, where you're from, what you uh, like about this. And uh, by the way, if you hit the subscribe button, it'll tell you when we go live. And if you hit the like button, my ego will inflate one size. So can, can, I, do you have Node in here? I prefer to run it with Node. I, I think it is running it in Node, but we can definitely run it from the terminal. Yep, there we go. Okay. Okay. Go. From the terminal, it it, it works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought now, we had now this is this is crazy. This is crazy, and and this is something very nice that we are doing here. What happened? So this is what we can call, uh, or or pretty much classes in JavaScript are just functions. So if I want to have access to this, wait, hold on a second. I'm still parsing that. Classes are basically functions. Are functions. Okay. If you see this, this is the old way of uh, defining classes in JavaScript. Is to just do a function and then, so like this, in in this situation, this could be, AKA, class, parent function. Yeah, and this is going to be the constructor. Okay. Uh, that's an interesting. Like I'm still tracking through what that means. Um, yeah, the, the previous error we had in this case is that specifically there. Okay, it, it's 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 still working. So why <laughs> this is why how you, you had issues? Live. <laughs> why you had issues before? Oh no! Now now I have. It didn't save. Okay, it didn't save exactly. What happened right now is that here i don't have a this in, gotcha. this in this function this is going to be undefined and i think because we are using we are using a strict javascript by default this yep. is node 16 so it is a strict so a strict is going to set that this oh we lost Tulian. some people will get out of and will do anything to get out of uh at explaining JavaScript, so hold on a second here. Let me let me type this. Uh, Julian, we lost your audio video. Could you rejoin? Uh, we'll leave that there. And um, Sarisha is saying reduce the music even more. Okay. Um, Spencer, should we turn down the music a little bit? Spencer is sort of our producer. Uh, everyone's saying cut the music. We can bring it all the way down there. We can talk about it later. How's that? I just uh, I just totally dropped it out. Um, now, we're trying to get Julian back in here. I don't know exactly what happened to him. Um, so let me remind everyone, if you got questions, comments, snide remarks, please leave them in the chat. And uh, oh, Julian's joining. Great. Uh, so we'll get that there. Functions are objects in JavaScript. Uh, 
Vishal Vaishali. Um, I'm probably mispronouncing your name. Forgive me, please. Uh, Vaishali, um, I don't know that there if that's true, but as soon as Julian gets back, we'll we'll pester him about that. We'll get him to let us know that. I know he said classes are the same. Classes are basically syntactic sugar on um, on functions. So I wonder if we could do something like, you know, in, in our Lightning Web components, we're used to um, we're used to export class foo extends uh, Lightning Web component basically. And I wonder if that could be equally written uh, function foo. Uh, but I don't know how to do the extends on that. So I'll have to, I'll have to, I'll have to work on that. Um, still not getting, uh, still don't have a Julian here. So we'll have to see what's going on. Um, All right. It looks like we may be having um, maybe having some technical difficulties with getting Julian back on the stream. Uh, thank you so much for the feedback on the music. We were trying something new, and um, it's really good to hear that feedback. I appreciate that. Um, so this is going to be difficult uh, to talk about. Um, let's do. Uh, let me see if I can't bring Julian back in here. Uh, generating a new. Let me try and pull him in here. Um, let's connect. We're gonna start session. Let's get our friend back in the chat in the uh, in here like that. Okay, so um, he's trying to join. We're doing that. We were looking at the different syntaxes here of this parent function, and we we're mostly talking about how this is scoped to the function. So this exists within this, but if we have a second function, like this anonymous function, and anonymous functions can be difficult to spot because I look at that and I don't necessarily see another function, but there it is. It is an anonymous function. You have to learn to look for that. That will have a different this. That's why we see console log of true. And here's Julian. Hello. Hey, it's good to have you back. Nice. I don't know. Internet is behaving weirdly. I know. Right world. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I was saying, okay, that like a couple of things that were happening. So, and, and, and I wanted to explain JavaScript have evolved a lot within the time. Right now, we are on uh, what it's called ES2020, which is the latest version of the ExmaScript uh, specification, which is the a standard committee that defines JavaScript and its function. And one of the things that have come from the fifth version of, of ECMAScript, which is ES2015, is the strict mode. So what happens with the strict mode? And that's one thing that I was explaining. Normally, this was part of the global object. If you run a JavaScript file in the browser, this was going to be equal to the window object. In Node, there is a global this, a variable. And let me see if I do keep a note here. That in Node, there is the global this and this represent pretty much the space where i'm going to assign global variables so okay. if i execute console log and i i think yes console log global this i'm not entirely sure where you're typing There. Oh, the, oh, here we go. Here we go. I, yes. I just need you to scroll down. Awesome. Sorry. Global this, and I execute on the terminal. I will get all of the different objects that are attached 
to the global space. Okay. So this is going to be the global this. Now, I, I want to pause there because we had a, a question come in from Velon. Sure. Uh, they want to know, how would you, what data type would you characterize this as? And I was just thinking, I, I want to say object, but that's, that's not really a data type. So I, what, it is a, it is a lot. And we lost Julian again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here, oh, okay. he's back automatically. Yay. Okay. Wow. So everything in JavaScript, it's an object. Mm -hmm. So functions are kind of also objects. Any value is going to be represented as an object and everything it's going to be treated as an object. So this is just a literal object in JavaScript. You can see here, I am printing out the global this, and it's telling me that it is an object. So it is an instance of the object class for calling it in a, in, in a way. Okay. And okay. you can see here, set timeout, it is a function that belongs to the global space. This is why I can use it. In this in this without giving time. it a namespace or a class without giving it a namespace exactly and you can see others that are part of that the global uh global namespace yeah there's all sorts of things in here okay yeah so okay getting back to the example we were executing so since this node version is using the strict version of javascript this like the regular keyword this in the global space is undefined. So right now, since this function doesn't have a specific okay. this defined, it will try to use the global one. But the global one in this case, or the global this keyword is undefined. So this is why we cannot do this, and it's going to fail. Interesting. Okay, so what what triggers JavaScript to create a, a valid this object within a function? There are like two ways in this case. Okay. If we are going to treat this as a constructor function, which is the previous example we did, right? So this yep. is a constructor function. We are using new okay. keyword to create an instant of that object. And that will create a this, or it will set a context for that specific instance. Makes sense. Okay, so that's gonna create a, a, a context variable named this yep. for the Now, just to assage my, like, I'm going a little mental here with sure, function sure. syntax defining classes. We could also say class foo and then have parent function um, and then down here do const self is equal to this and then do the same thing. We could do set timeout and do console log and then give it a thousand uh, and then down here we could do we could do um const bar equals new foo uh, and then call parent function i believe yeah yeah all right so this is the more this is the ES6. That's uh, a little bit ES more organized. Uh, yeah, and this this doesn't make my head twitch. Um, exactly. <laughs> but but you you asked me here to come to talk about like the crazy stuff, so I'm talking about True. the crazy stuff, right? True. Uh, so I mean, it's the crazy stuff. So we got this as a keyword, and the key takeaway here is that this is. Uh, this is such a hard keyword to talk about because you want to use the word this in the language and then in, in your speech and then it becomes very like what are you referring to but the this keyword is defined by the instantiation of an object per function is that is that a succinct way of putting that 
one way of doing it. One way of doing it. Okay. Yeah. What are the, the other ways? What's the other the way? The other doing way it? is binding a context into a function. So let's learn how can we bind the context into a function. Here we have parent function that is trying to set a value onto this, but we learned that this doesn't exist. It is undefined, but we can bind the context. So we can do something like uh, parent function with context equals parent function bind and now I am setting an object as the context. It could be empty or it could be like a complete object with different properties. So help me understand why you would want to do this and why would you want to do that instead of just instantiating it? Because in this case, I am treating this as a function, not as a function constructor. I don't want to create objects based out of the execution of this function. I just want to use it as a function. So instead of using new, I am going just to execute the parent function with context like this. And it will work. Uh, I guess. I guess I'm still missing why I would want to do that, other than just you know. Yes, true. This is this is something that you are not going to use on your regular day basis. Okay. Unless okay. you are like creating libraries, frameworks, or things where you are like re like rewriting a function to add a different context. Gotcha. But this is this is not this is something that is not for the day to day basis. We are talking about internals. Fair enough. Fair enough. Another okay. way. Another way. This is bind. I am binding a context into a function, and then I am getting a function that already have that context. So let's comment. So we have the node here. You can also call that function with a context. So you can call parent function call is going to execute the function and the first argument of call is going to be the context so in this case this is the context i am passing and immediately i am executing the function okay if you want to pass arguments you can do it by passing an array of arguments using call or you can use apply and pass a list of arguments in here. So call and apply are similar. They are going to work uh, different depending on how are you going to pass the arguments. But this is the same. If I execute apply with the context, it's going to call that function applying that specific context, which is the this that I'm setting. So if I'm hearing you right and understanding this, uh, call, apply, bind, these are all techniques you might use in sort of a meta programming situation. Yeah, meta programming situation. Okay. This is something that you you know you don't normally use on your day to day basis. Now, for those of you who are like meta programming, what's that? Uh, well, meta programming is the the uh, dark magic of writing software that writes software on the fly. Um, you have code that writes code in a way that is uh, dynamic upon execution. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I refer to it as dark magic and I love it. It's I love metaprogramming. Uh, it's it's so much fun. Um, all right. Yeah. So we've we've just changed this to run it. And now when we run this, it's going to give us our it's going to say Kevin, right? Exactly. OK, if I change these, I execute and we go uh, Kevin. Perfect. As we want it. This okay. is different than self because my original dist is different than the parent. And I, I am getting the value I need through self. But in normal JavaScript, this became an anti-pattern. Because you don't need to start keeping track of this and what if you have like another uh, chained function execution. It's, it's, it's going to become a little 
it's going to become problematic to maintain. So, ECMAScript uh, 6, I think it was the version, introduced arrow functions, which, bear with me, arrow functions are not a replacement of functions. Don't replace all of the different functions calls you are seeing everywhere with arrow functions because they are shorter and they might look cool. No. But but I like they, arrow functions. Of course, I, I, I love them too, but they are created for the specific purpose of keeping the parent this while executing a function. What does this mean? That I can get rid of self in this case, I can rewrite this as an arrow function, and now I don't need to keep track of a variable. I yeah, don't when need we... to copy the previous self to get the value. I just want to take a step back here. Um, arrow functions we covered last week, so if you want to see more about those, look at last week's episode. But uh, this is where you would put parameters yeah. um, if you needed to. And the arrow function syntax specifically it almost like it almost says that this equal self equals this pass self in and then handles that mapping for you it does the mapping uh, for you so it will get this from the pattern so if i execute the example it will still work now you told me that arrow functions aren't a replacement but i'm looking at this going why wouldn't I want to use an arrow function here? Unless I specifically had a situation where I wanted this to be its own function scoped uh, variable. There are, there are certain libraries that are, for example, evented. That uh, You have an event listener or an event emitter, something that it's uh, emitting events and you need to pass a function to listen for that event. And there are certain libraries that feed that function that you are passing as callback with a context. Mm. So you can have access to certain properties. So they are not going to give you the properties through the function signature. They are going to feed you or give you the properties through the context. Gotcha. So if you use an arrow function, there is no context in there because what happens? And this is a good experiment here. Let's do... Um, arrow function as an expression, right? Console log this. So I have an arrow function as an expression. So I'm creating this arrow function and I'm going to be executing it. Arrow function. And I'm going to be calling it with a context. And that context, it will be a value, Kevin. What do you expect here? I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm, my head's a little warped on this, so I'm not entirely yeah. certain. <laughs> what What do you expect here? Uh, that this will be populated by the object we pass in as the first parameter of call. And the reality is... It looks like that's exactly what happened. I am executing it, the arrow function here. It's console log this. Hmm. Let me let me put something. I got this to see what I got because it seems I am not getting. Okay, I got undefined. undefined. Why? Because arrow functions are always using the parent this. And the parent this here oh. is the global. And so it doesn't matter what you pass in the call that context it doesn't matter. is ignored? It will always ignore the, the, the context binding. Because arrow functions are special. They don't have a context by themselves. Their context is going to be the parent context. And that's the main gotcha with, with this in these situations. Oofta. So I'm starting to feel like the magic of JavaScript is that 
uh, it's backwards compatible with like layers and layers of syntactic sugar here. Um, so arrow functions ignore the, the context of this uh, for execution. Even it when you call get, them... It will get it from the parent, from the context from the where the function is being executed. Okay. So if we were to take and do... But remember that this is undefined. So, so you will need to define it first. Like this equals an object and then assigning a property and then... Invalid left-hand side object. Okay. In this uh, case, it seems we cannot do that because we are on a strict... On a... I told you... I thought we could set this that way. Um, I think in, in this case it's not possible because we are on a strict, a, a strict JavaScript. Okay. We, we cannot override the pretty much this global this. Okay, so it's hard to hard to demonstrate how it would pick up this. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can do it. Okay. For example, in this context. Let's do, let's move this internally, right? But let's change this. I am setting the context to say Julian, right? Oh, okay. And let's execute parent function with an empty context. So what should we get here? I'm thinking Julian get... or Kevin? Well, let me find a coin to flip. Um, let me, I'm going to oh. go with, uh, I'm going to go with that it should be uh, Kevin because this is going to be ignored. Oh, but it, 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 it's not picking my example here. Okay, now it's saved. Okay, I got object, object. Yeah, it's going to get, well, this is, let's print the full object because it is doing a weird conversion. It is not serializing that. Okay, awesome. It's getting Kevin because this is the one from the parent. Yeah. Not the one I am passing. Okay. And that's a good a good example. So that's the main the main thing we need to understand with this is this represents the context of the function I'm executing. And if I am using arrow functions, it's going to get the parent context, not its own. Okay. Okay. So let's pivot here because we've we've uh, sure. only got about twenty minutes left. I'm gonna I'm gonna nuke this and I'm going to uh, throw a, uh, a hard one your way. How in the world does inheritance work? Okay, that's 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 very good. And and, and you were talking about classes and and all yeah. the all the different good stuff. So let's do this. Pretty much, JavaScript is a prototype-based language. That's what it is. But it's a prototype. Pretty much, a prototype is a chain or a property that is attached to a specific type of object that contains a collection of properties that represent that object. Every prototype chain or every prototype property is going to be attached to another prototype and then to another prototype prototype until it gets to the parent and the parent is going to be always object so for example i have a class oh, let me type here i have class a it is inherit class b inherit class c this inherits from object and then the prototype of object is going to be null. So I'm all sorry, of the what? different. So let me. <laughs> the, let me. The prototype of object is null. Yes. Let me let me change the the, the direction so it's a little bit better to to read. 
um, starting to feel like the inheritance model for this is uh, it's got like a three drink minimum for understanding it. It's crazy. So <laughs> the very basic of everything is no. In the beginning, there was the no, the void. Is this why there's a difference in between in JavaScript between null and undefined? Yes. There is undefined. There is nothing there. Null is a, a specific value that represents uh, that it's null. Okay. Okay. So, object or this thing, for example, cons ob object. It's the main. Let me com let me comment this so we have like correct syntax. Okay. This is the parent of all of the different uh, objects that I'm going to be creating in JavaScript. Okay. An object has its specific properties. So it has a constructor and some properties that I can use to check for the prototype. Pretty much uh, doing prototype operations with within an object. If I access the prototype, which is this crazy property called proto with two underscores, if I access the prototype of the main object, it's going to be null. Okay. So that's the end of the chain. I am getting null here. This is the end of the chain. If I create an object, for example, object one, this is a new object, let's say name uh, Julian and age, I am 37, I guess. You guess? Yeah, I forgot. Fair enough. If I print the prototype of my object, let me cancel this. This object has as the main prototype is object, and then after object is going to be null. But I can uh, create an inheritance. So I can create objects based out of this Julian object, for example. So I am not operating in classes. I'm operating in objects right now. So I can create an object too. Here, object two, which is going to be a new object based off object one. And if I print out the prototype of that object, it needs to show its parent. So what okay. is my parent? It's going to be object one, which is Julian H37. Okay. So that's how, how inheritance works on pretty much on the background. We are keeping a chain of proto prototype properties. So right now I can say, for example, in this object two, I can set other other properties. For, for example, last name. My last name is Duke. And I can easily say, okay, print uh, object two dot name. So originally, object two doesn't have a name directly, but it has it through its prototype. So what's happening here? When I'm trying to access a property or a method, it will ask, does this property belongs to my prototype? No, okay. It belongs to my parent? Yes, okay, I'm going to return a value. If it is an Undefined property, let's say uh, skills, I wanted to have like some sort of property, an array or something with my skills. That's something that doesn't exist. It is not on my prototype. It is not on my parents. It is not an object. How, and it is not a null. 
how far up the inheritance chain will it check to find a, a property? Up to null, up to object. And what happens if you've got an in inherited property that is the same name as a local object property? I'm not sure how to phrase that. It is. It is. It, it doesn't do it by name. It, it does it by the prototype. So it is the prototype object reference, or this pretty much property that 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 it is that it is in here, that's going to be doing the checking. Okay. So every time I create like an instance and 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 I inherit a property, I, I inherit an object is going to create a link into that prototype chain. It sounds crazy, but this is the internals of JavaScript. Yeah. This is why on ECMAScript 6, they decided to do, okay, let's create a syntax, syntax sugar so we can use classes with extends, keywords, so people don't need to think about prototype chains and links and everything, and we make everything like it is uh understandable for you like as regular or ob like object-oriented developers use but well, internally yeah. it's using this so if you have uh, this prototypical inheritance chain how do you handle things and and maybe the answer is it doesn't but how do you handle things like um uh interfaces or um extendable classes i guess they're all extendable under the prototypical okay so how do you handle interfaces yeah, in this case, uh, I think JavaScript doesn't have interfaces. It just has like classes that can extend. Interesting. It is. It is not. This is what what I say that JavaScript is not a fully uh, uh, oriented object, object oriented language. Okay. It's more can a prototype do, oriented language. Can you have multiple inheritance chains? Like, so no. I can I can't inherit you, from Bob you, and you, Sue. You. You. you can through the chain so like if if object a inherits from object b then an object c can inherit from both of them if it inherits from b but i can't have object c inherits from a and b exactly okay it needs to be a chain okay that so, and this sensible. is this is objects this mm -hmm. is objects in here so we are talking about objects not function constructors which which is pretty much the analogous to classes. Let's let's do this in classes then. I want to see how this yeah. works in classes. So let's do a function constructor. Let's do user, for example. We have this name. Let's do it with, with the parameters here. So it is a little bit better. Name and this age equals age. So I have a function constructor, which is analogous to a class, and I'm going to be doing user new equals new user. If I type property, it's going to be better. And let's say Kevin, and you're you're young, right? I'm I'm 41. 41, super young. So now, <laughs> says the younger, says the younger guy. Yeah. So now this is this is pretty much function constructor. We are not using object literals right now. Here. Okay. What's going on is that now this function constructor has a pro prototype object that I can attach methods and things on. For example, I can say user dot prototype dot say hi that's a good example let google uh, let uh, github compiler autocomplete things and let's do a console log hello my name is this name ah nice cool so we use this in this case so what we are doing here is we are defining a a constructor function and we are attaching a method to its prototype so all of the instances of that user are going to have not only the properties in their control in their constructor but also the properties that are attached to its prototype so i can say user say hi and this is going to be 
Hello, my name is Kenny. All right, that's interesting because so I, I know this technique from another language, Ruby, where we have mm -hmm. the idea we call it monkey patching, where you can mm -hmm. take a piece of code that somebody else has given you, any object definition, and reopen it and add a method to it. Um, in the case of this, we just added the say hi method to our user after it was defined. Um, is it possible to to do that to like let's say you're using a library and they define that function constructor class thing yeah. I, I can just go and attach a new method to it can i overwrite the contents of a method yes totally through the so, prototype so so this is a swiss army chain so i can do anything i want but i might cut my foot off exactly this is okay. this is why javascript is powerful and this is why it is dangerous as well because you this does, does not represent like a security concern, but it, give, it gives you a lot of like dynamically to, to, to do something with the, with the language. Yeah, it is a security concern yourself. if you are like injecting code on a browser application and you are overriding the methods to do bad things. But sure, sure, sure. That's, that's not the dis today's discussion. Okay. But let's talk about inheritance here in this, in this situation. Let's create a new a new class based okay. off our user using function constructor, let's say admin, right? An admin gets a name, an age, and a set of permissions for some reason. And here it's auto-completed me. Cool. So I am going to execute the constructor of my parent function through call attaching the these as the context of this new function. So I'm attaching this new function context into the constructor, and I am setting up these other two parameters, name and age, and then I'm setting up my new property here. Oh, so this is the call method is going to allow you to set the inheritance chain? To just set the constructor properties. Oh, OK. Right, I I I'm not sure if I'm getting uh, say hi in here. That's what I wanted to check. So let's say new admin Kevin. Cool. Cannot post. Can delete post. And let's say if admin can say hi. Can I say hi? Mm -mm. Admin cannot say hi. Sure, admin has the properties, but it doesn't have that method. Why? Because I need to inherit the prototype by using object create and getting the prototype from user. Now I am copying the prototype, creating a chain between this new class and the previous class. So this is the line that sets the the inheritance chain. Exactly. This is just the sub, the like the super function thing that we call. So this uh, is when using. Super. Exactly. This is the super. But this is JavaScript from the past. If you see this code, so you can understand. Okay, this is how it was done before, and this is how it is happening internally today. You have a beautiful way of defining these by using the class a keyword with the constructor method that have the name and age, and you can define. Uh, if I type the things, are going to be better. And you can define uh, the method, say hi, that says uh, the console log. Hello, my name is my name. And this is easier to understand. I don't need to mess to with prototypes. I don't need to set up prototypes or to, or to understand the internals of JavaScript. And if I want to use, for example, the new admin, I just extend the new admin from the new user. The new user. And I override the constructor if I want to add the permissions. And now the say hi method is going to be inherited by just using the extends keyword. OK, so how do we call super when we create new admin? OK, so here 
I'm going to create the constructor, and I just use super. Okay, so super so is now, a keyword. Okay. Exactly. Now a keyword was created. So, Volan, people, I hope that answers your question. Let yeah, me know if people it People that are more familiar with object-oriented programming languages like Java, these will be like, oh, okay, now this makes sense. Instead of messing with prototypes and then I need to create like a link and dealing with internal properties, I am just using language constructs to write my code. I, but, I feel like I feel like the class structure is a whole lot easier to understand and makes me hate JavaScript less. Definitely. I, I love it. When when it was introduced, I was like, yes, this is the way to go. JavaScript, you are you you are heading into the right direction. Because even though this work, there is a lot of anti-patterns that you can find out there in certain libraries. And sometimes people might forget to create the prototype, uh, the prototype link, on, or they do some hacky stuff. And, and things can get messy. It's like the so wild, wild west of programming languages. Yep, it is the wild, wild west. And it's a language that has been evolving for, for a while. JavaScript was created by Brendan I in 10 days. And imagine the fundamentals of a programming language created just in 10 days, and then start evolving a language that is the main language for the web, because it is the only programming language that run on a browser. I, I'm absolutely befuddled. Uh, 10 days seems like too little to do any kind of programming, let alone the, an interpreter for an entire language. Um, mm -hmm. And it feels like JavaScript has things about it that are unique to JavaScript and nowhere else. So like sitting down and developing a, pro Java, a programming language in 10 days and also coming up with prototypical inheritance as a thing. I can't yeah. think of anybody else that uses prototypical inheritance. I'll put it that way. Uh, you know, I have only seen this on, on on JavaScript. I'm not sure yeah. if he, any other language has something similar. I don't know any other prototypically inherited languages, uh, but and, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, Julian. I don't get why you would want prototypical inheritance. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what that gives us. <laughs> like I know, I know that I know I know that pain. I have done JavaScript for a while and. Believe me, every time the language evolves, I try to catch up with what's happening, with what's coming new. And if you have a session about like, or maybe you already did async away and asynchronous programming, I can show you how it was done before. That's a pain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for, I'll give you a preview, everyone, of, of doing that. Uh, you know how we had those anonymous functions? You'd have these, uh, it was like the, the inevitable march to the right where you just have anonymous function that does something and then has an anonymous function that does something and then has an anonymous function that does something. Oh my goodness, was it? It's like it was... Call the, the callback of hell or pyramid of yeah. doom. You ended like... Pyramid that. of doom. That's the one I was pyramid looking Pyramid of doom, yeah. And then came promises. And I, I love promises. And I still get a little tripped up with async await because I think about them in terms of promises. And I know... That shouldn't, because async await is basically syntactic sugar on promises. On top of promises, yeah. But it, you know, I am still looking like, where do I put my then um, when I'm when I'm thinking about it? Because uh, I I love me some promises. Uh, listen, everyone, we've had a great session with Julian. I want to thank you for joining us again. If you would uh, subscribe, uh, you'll be notified when we go live. And if you hit the like button. I'll feel better, and uh, that'll be great. I love I love that. I love likes and. Uh, Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And uh, again, thank you very much. See ya, and thank you for having me. Bye-bye.